Misty with Tea Quilts, and I am here to quilt the quilt that I have donated to give to subscribers that purchased from me in 2020. Uh, Judy Judy actually won this quilt top, and I am about to load it, and I thought that I would go ahead and do an addendum to our video series and show you some of the process. I have been asked by a lot of people, how do I load my quilts? And so I thought that I would take this opportunity to show you. Keep in mind that I have a very small space, so you're not going to be able to see me do everything. But I will, or even have up close shots, because I'm just going to set the camera in a position, and then I'm going to go from there. So let's get started. <music> So the first thing that I do is that I load my backing. I've already cut my backing to size. I have also already cut my batting to size. And you do need to make sure that you measure before you load your quilt backing top and batting to make sure that you have enough backing fabric and batting for your quilt top. I also add four additional inches to the each side of my quilt. So eight inches total for a top and bottom and then my sides I add an eight inches to that so that I make sure that I have enough room if the quilt draws up if my batting starts to roll crooked or if I cut it crooked then I've got room to play with so we're gonna go ahead and start with the backing this is a quilt backing it's 108 inches wide my quilt top is 88 inches wide so I made sure this 108 is going to be plenty with leftovers and then I made sure that the width of my quilt top is what I cut off the yardage of my backing so all I'm doing now is just putting the backing over my frame letting gravity help me with this to hold my quilt backing sort of kind of straight uh, notice that I have not worried about where my center is I actually float my quilt tops so I don't worry about where my center is okay. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the salvage and I am actually using leader grips and you get to tell it by the size of your frame what it is that you get with your leader grip. So for my frame, which is a 12 foot frame, I got four with the long strips and four short strips. They also give you little small ones to hold if you're gonna do from the center out. But since I don't do from the center out, I don't worry about that. For this size quilt, I need two large and one of the mediums. So I'm going to start with a large, put the medium in the center, and then end with a large. So I'm just going to put these back. I just wanted to show you what I was using. And then I also have a blue pole that's inside of my frame. I'll have to insert a picture for that. And uh, that is what I am clamping this white piece on. I put it into my leaders. With this stick here, I like to leave like eight to 10 inches on each side. So I'm going to just clamp my leader down. And then what I do is I put the edge of the Savage even with the stitching that's on my leader. And I'll show you the stitching on the leader. So 
So I'm just putting the edge of my selvage with the edge of the stitching that's on my leader. Okay, so that's one. Now I'm going to do the smaller one in the middle. And I have a clamp here just helping me to hold it on the frame. And now we're going to go ahead and put our second leader grip on. And I am going to probably speed this up just so that you don't have to watch me do this the entire time. But I'll put the second one on, which won't take very long. And then I'll speed up on the third one. Now, remember that I haven't done anything to center this. All I did was use the salvage to put this on to make sure that it was straight. I have the sides of my frame held with my side clamps. These here is what I did. I put this on my leader just to hold it so that it sits up on my frame while I'm loading. And then we're just going to come to the other side and straighten out our backing. And now I'm going to go ahead and roll this backing onto this bar, but I'm going to stop where it has a little hang about right here. When I'm also rolling my backing on, I just put my hand on this frame, but down on the end. And so as I'm rolling, it keeps my top bar from moving. It's actually my take-up bar, my pickup bar, however you want to say it. But that's what I'm holding. And I'm looking for the bottom of my end. And I want it to hang off the... I want it to hang off the table here. So about right there is good. Now I'm going to put one of these on here to hold it in position so that it doesn't move. I don't want this bar to move. And now it's time for me to come and actually work and put the plastic clamps on this side of the backing. So I already got my pieces laying here for this side and then what I do is I go ahead and just let this leader fall down and then I roll it so that it's even with this backing where the backing is a little bit longer Hoping you can see that. I'm going to roll a little bit more. I want to make sure I got room to clamp that. So, by me doing that, I'm making sure that my quilt is going to be square as I'm putting it onto the frame. So, I'm not worried about the selvage on this side. I just want to make sure that I don't have any puckers and I don't have any twisting of my backing that's happening in this area. So this time I'm going to start about what I think is the center and I'm just going to start putting my plastic clamp on. Okay. And again, I have that eight inches 
to 10 inches on each side. And then I'm going to repeat this on the other end. Okay, then once I have this on, I just go ahead and let it fall to the inside. And then I'm going to go to the other side of the machine and I'm going to continue to roll this towards the backing. I want to remove this that I temporarily put here to keep my roller from moving. And now I'm going to go ahead and roll this up. And you can see that my backing is nice and square to the frame. I'm not worried about how much fabric is left up here at the top, if it's even or not. I want to make sure that this is nice and flat with no twists, no uh, noticeable dips into the actual backing. Looks very good. So now we're going to add the batting. So now it's time to add our batting. And my batting is 96 inches wide and so I cut it at least 96 inches the other direction because I wanted my quilt is square and I wanted to make sure that I had my extra 8 inches. My quilt top again is 88 inches. So I'm just laying it on top here. Then I'm making sure that I put the top of my batting down the out the right side of your batting should always be on the outside of your batting so when you open package batting or batting by the yard the outside that's showing is your top side of the batting and then I just lay it down here make sure that it's nice and straight Now I'm going to base my batting down, but we're going to go ahead and add our backing as well. And then I'm just going to pull the backing back when I get ready to baste. So you make sure that you've got, if you have a top and bottom, depending on what quilt pattern you're using, you may be loading your quilt lengthwise if it's longer than it is wider, depending upon your pattern. You can sometimes do that and save rolls. In this case, my quilt is square. However, I do have a marked top and bottom just because I know what I want to be the top of this quilt. And so I do have a sticker somewhere on it letting me know what's the top. So I am doing what's called floating your quilt and it's called Lori's Way, loading Lori's Way and I float my quilt top. I don't actually put my uh, bottom end of my quilt top on the leader. I just let it hang. So the only thing that I put on my leader is my backing fabric and it is with the leader grips. So now what I do is I just visually center my quilt top on the frame here. Just visually looking at it. And then I'm just going to put a pin on this side just to hold this position over here. And then we will, because we're going to end up pulling this back. But I want to hold this temporarily in place, so I'm going to use three of these magnetic clamps. I got the magnetic clamps from Harbor Freight. And I'm just using it so that my quilt top doesn't fall off the frame. And right now I'm just eyeballing position. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just trying to make sure that I know where I'm going to start so that I don't slide my quilt down accidentally. Okay, 
So now I'm going to go ahead and pull this back so we can base on our, uh, we're going to do a baseline so we know that it's straight using our horizontal channel locks. So I need to cut my machines on and I'll be right back. So I have my machine set up to do a basting stitch of a half inch and I'm also putting on my channel locks and what the channel locks do is they make it so that I can stitch a straight line down so I'm going to come down about an inch from where I want to start stitching and I am going to put on my channel locks my horizontal channel locks. So now I can't move my machine forward, but I can move my machine this way. And what it's going to do is give me a basting stitch. That's a half inch basting stitch. And then I'm going to line this quilt top up to that basting stitch to make sure that I'm loading square. And I know you can't see detail, but you should, if you have a long arm, you should know some of the terms that I'm using. They just wanted to see how I was using the leader grips for the most part, how I load my quilts with the floating technique. So this is my base that I would do on any other quilt top that I'm quilting. I'm down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and lock those stitches off and pull up my bobbin thread. So now I have a line that's basted onto my, that has basted my batting to my backing. It is now attached. And then what I'm going to do is put my top to that line and I'm going to use pins when I go to pin that down. And I'm going to pin about every five inches or so. And then I'm going to base this and remove the pins as I go. I'm going to actually base this top onto this frame. So I've just pinned down into the corner. Now I'm going to take my machine and baste these actual stitches down. I'm going to see if I can bring you over this way. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll try. All right, so I know that everything is nice and straight here. I made sure when I laid this down that I didn't do any tugging or pulling. So I know that everything is okay here. So now what I like to do is I'm going to take off my channel locks and now my machine can move in all directions. What I want to do is just stitch right here, come down off my corner. I don't want to start on my corner. I'm just going to come down about an inch, pull up my bobbin thread, and then I'm going to tie off. And now I'm going to go ahead and baste I'm still using that half inch base and then I want to go back and forth back and forth on my corners just to make sure that my corners are in place and then I'm going to go ahead and come down and baste all 
and I'm trying to be about one eighth of an inch from the edge and then I can also pull out my pins as I go as well So my arm, normally I'm using, I'm left-handed, so I use my left hand. So I'm trying to make it so that it's not in your way, but <laughs> hopefully I do a decent job here still. And I'm doing this free-handed. So it's not basted, just long as it's within that one-quarter inch uh, seam so that it won't show. when I put the binding on. So I'm going to stop there, remove these pins. And then I'm going to continue on down the quilt. If any of these pins are in my way, I need to stop and pull out the pins. You do not want to stitch over pins. So I've got my pins removed that I'm not going to be using later. I need to take off these clamps that were temporarily holding my backing in place. And I have put my needle down on the far end, which you can't see. <laughs> but down there, I have my needle down in the corner. And now what I'm going to do, you can see here where I have all this space. I do this when I load so that this is closer to me instead of me trying to baste all the way back here. So now what I need to do is pull this frame, pull this quilt up so that I can get my quilting area to be larger. So I'm temporarily taking off these metal clamps and I will be using those again. And then another thing I want to do is I want to, I have a ruler that's taped to my frame and it helps me to keep my quilt square as I'm rolling. So I also add this and I have a video explaining how this works as well. I'll see if I can find the video for that. But what I do is I, once I get my square edge here, I go ahead and put this clip. I have a paper clip right here that I just put this clip where the edge of my quilt is. It also helps me to measure so that I know I'm rolling my quilt square. And then I also do the same thing on this side. I go ahead and put my clip on the end as well. And now I can go ahead and roll my quilt top. Okay, now that I've rolled my quilt top, I want to come back, make sure that my batting and my quilt top are smooth. 
then I can put a clamp on it to hold that into position. That's one side. Then I go back and do the other side. And then I work with the middle. Add two or three more clamps depending on what I feel I need. I'll try four today. Okay, so now my next step is to go ahead and base down my sides. And again, this is called Loading Lori's Way. And she also has a detailed video on it as well on YouTube. So now I'm just going to go ahead and baste. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to do a tie-off stitch, release, so that I can pull up my bobbin thread. And I do use pins um, to hold my positions when I'm rolling so when I roll it doesn't it holds the position so I know it's square to the tape in that spot when I roll so let me show you down here where I'm going to baste again you're going to be kind of seeing my arm a little bit because I'm left-handed and now I'm going to go ahead and baste this down That pin's in the way, I gotta take it out. And come down as far as I can. That's far as I can go. And then I'm going to do a tie off stitch. And now I just move my machine backwards, bring it back to the same position so I can pull up my bobbin thread. Okay. And then I go ahead and get rid of any excess thread tails from me basting the quilt backing and batting. I mean the quilt top and the batting. Okay, what I was talking about with the pins, you can see where I quit stitching here, but my ruler is right here. So what I do is I just stick pins in here so that I know my quilt is straight right there. And then the next time that I roll my quilt, I will know that these pins are in the square position. And then I just have to go from wherever I stop the roll to the new position that will be on the tape as I'm rolling my quilt upwards. Final step. Before I start quilting is you want to put on side clamps. I also bought the side clamps from them. This is actually my second set. When you're side clamping, you want to only put this on your backing fabric. And then I take this edge and use one of my clamps here onto, I put it onto the knot that's on the ribbon and then I pull it back to the so that it's taut but not super tight and then that's my quilting position I'm ready to actually start quilting I will repeat this on the other side as well this is how I load if you got any additional questions about how I load please check that out I am going to do a computerized pattern on this quilt I've done a video, I'll link it up at the eye above so that you can check out how I actually uh, start my butler process for getting my pattern to quilt out. Everything from um, 
setting your quilt space to getting your quilt patterns in to actually nesting your row so i have uh, videos on that so i will make sure that i link it up at the i above thank you so much for watching see you next time Hi quilters, I'm just adding an insert here. This quilt is actually 84 and 3 quarter inches square. 84 and 3 quarter inches square. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye T quilters. Stay blessed. Mm -hmm.